Hello and welcome. Pastor John here, uh, welcoming you to another part in our uh, Bible, going through the Bible series, and we're going to be reading a passage from the book of Nehemiah in the Old Testament. Nehemiah, that is chapter 9, verses 25 to 27. So please open your Bibles, go to into the, the Old Testament, and flip to Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 25 to 27. And here we read. Our ancestors captured fortified cities and fertile land. They took over houses full of good things, with cisterns already dug, and vineyards and olive groves and fruit trees in abundance. So they ate until they were full and grew fat and enjoyed themselves and all your blessings. But despite all this, they were disobedient and rebelled against you. They turned their backs on your law. They killed your prophets who warned them to return to you, and they committed terrible blasphemies. So you handed them over to the enemies who made them suffer. But in their time of trouble, they cried out to you, and you heard them from heaven. In your great mercy, you sent them liberators who rescued them from their enemies. God bless the universe word. Rebellion and repentance. Rebellion and repentance. So we're here and still in the historical books in the Old Testament. And Nehemiah is joined to Ezra. It's linked uh, thematically. And uh, they should be read together. Really, Nehemiah, we, if you joined last time, I uh, encourage you to read both books, Nehemiah and Ezra. And um, they are basically, they form, uh, the, there's one thematic link there. And uh, so you want to read both of those uh, books, uh, ideally together, uh, along with the prophet Haggai, who helps build, bridge all these parts together. In the passage we just wrote, um, in your, where it says in the last verse, in your great mercy, um, so Nehemiah is talking here to God, right? Uh, in your great mercy, Nehemiah writes, you sent them liberators who rescued them from their enemies. And the liberators here refer to the judges. So at the time of the judges, um, after the time of, um, at, the, at the early stages of the conquest, when Joshua takes over the promised land, um, the uh, there's the time of the judges, and that's what liberators uh, refer to uh, here refers to here. So a little bit of background. So um, uh, Nehemiah completes the restoration of the wall, uh, which we can find in Nehemiah chapter six, and uh, so um, there was a complete standstill of the rebuilding of the wall. And so, um, as um, under Ezra with Ezra, and so with Nehemiah coming alongside him, uh, Ezra reads the law, the Mosaic law. Uh, that's the law given from God to Moses to the people. And now uh, people confess their sins. So that's the background here. And the topic is the importance of repentance. So, in verse 25, we have a coming to confession, right? In other words, to uh, confess. We confess to our Lord Jesus Christ and our Lord Jesus Christ only. Lord Jesus, I did wrong. I sinned against you. Please forgive me my sins and um, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. That's in 1 John uh, 1, verses 8 to 9. And Jesus is, is faithful and he will forgive uh, uh, anybody with a um, repentant heart. Um, so people, in verse 26, people see things then uh, from God's perspective. In other words, what God can do and accomplish. In other words, uh, completing the, the, um, the building, the restructuring of the walls. Um, uh, Jerusalem was, uh, you know, the walls were a protective measure and they had to be rebuilt. Uh, otherwise, people, you know, Anybody says, hey, I'm going to come in there and take whatever I want. Um, they can, you know, just 
come at night or in the daytime and just take or do whatever bad, evil things they're up to. So the building of the Wall of Jerusalem was crucial at this moment in time. So um, in verse 27 then, there's an acknowledgement of God. That is who God is, um, especially his mercy. So the result here is a call of, uh, of wholeheartedness, wholehearted renewal of the uh, covenant. That is what's happening here. So um, there is a movement here, right, from movement from rebellion against God to repentance. And that's what we, um, we see here in uh, Nehemiah. So I encourage you to read the entire book of Nehemiah. Uh, there's a lot going on there and a lot of opposition and uh, challenges Nehemiah faces. But indeed, they do uh, succeed, and Nehemiah um, um, accomplishes the rebuilding of the wall in an astonishing uh, short period of time. But I'm not going to give it away. Read it yourself. And uh, real people, real events, and uh, there's a lot of encouragement in the book of Nehemiah there for us too. All right. So uh, we can ask, so how does all of this, how does this apply to your life? And my life and our life right so keep in mind uh, there's ongoing um, disobedience uh, that is rebellion against God so disobeying God uh, for example going against the Ten Commandments for example not following Jesus is rebellion against God and that's pretty much what it is so we read here uh, on this note uh, about uh, what ongoing disobedience and rebellion against God looks like in First Samuel chapter fifteen twenty two, uh, I could encourage you to look that up. So, the first book of Samuel, chapter fifteen verse twenty two, uh, we read. But Samuel replied, "What is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices, or your obedience to His voice? Listen." Obedience is better than sacrifice, and submission is better than offering the fat of rams. God bless you of his word. So uh, God is not interested in wholehearted uh, sacrifices and rituals, but a heart that's wholly bent towards him, and that is a heart bent towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that's what all that God is interested in, as Jesus as God in the flesh. So um, what are some benefits of repentance for you? As, as we uh, understand, repentance um, of sins is mandatory um, because if, if we don't uh, repent and, um, you know, we will all, or whoever, whoever does not repent, will, we, uh, those people who choose to do so will perish in hell, in the eternal hellfire. They will be eternally separated from God um, and they will perish in hell and so we read in Luke, the Gospel of Luke 13, verse 3 to 5, we read, Not at all, and you will perish too, unless you repent of your sins and turn to God. And what about the 18 people who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them? Were they the worst sinners in Jerusalem? No, and I tell you again that unless you repent, you will perish too. God bless you in his word. So this is Jesus speaking, and this is a very stern and firm call to repentance. And another uh, important part about repentance is that it, um, that it makes possible uh, a personal relationship with God. Without a repentant heart, a heart bent towards Jesus, there is no personal relationship with God. But with a heart, repentant heart bent towards Jesus, there is. So in Luke chapter 3, verse 7 to 8, we read, When the crowds came to John for baptism, he said, You brood of snakes, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Who warned you to flee the coming wrath? Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, We're safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing, for I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. God bless you in this word. So here we have John the Baptist, um, who's preparing the way for Lord Jesus Christ, uh, seeing right through the um, 
the uh, hypocrisy, people uh, who are who are not repentant and uh, who are uh, who knows why they are just showing up there. He uh, he sees the evil in their hearts and uh, points it out to them. Um, so in other words, don't don't pretend to love God, but truly love God, and uh, you know reveal it through your, your not just words but your your deeds and your actions too, right? And so repentance, lastly, is also important so that the Holy Spirit can work in and through us freely, right? Um, we can grieve the Holy Spirit, and that's something we don't want to do. Um, but um, the uh, uh, on the other side, if we surrender to our Lord Jesus Christ and He's uh, promised us the Holy Spirit working in and through our hearts, your heart, my heart, every Christian, every believer, um, he can then work freely in and through us to convict us uh, and then convince us um, to a to a God-given uh, course of action, um, right? So that's another uh, benefit of repentance. And so we read in Acts chapter 2, the book of Acts 2, verse 38, Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. God bless the reading of his word. So it doesn't mean that baptism in and by itself without a repentant heart uh, does anything, right? That, uh, to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, baptism is a, is a form um is an outward uh, sign that people have turned to Christ and are therefore uh, baptized and expressing it through the uh, performance, through the, um, uh, uh, through the act of baptism. But baptism in and by itself is, is, does nothing without a heart bent towards Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's one of the things you just want to understand. Um, so uh, there's no method to receive the Holy Spirit. Um, the only way, only thing we can do is to um, read God's Word, the Bible, understand who Jesus is um, as God in the flesh and why he came to atone to die for us and is on the cross, and um, then um, repent to, to uh, you know, let God call us to himself. Jesus calls us to himself. Even faith and repentance is something that uh, Jesus does from beginning to end, right? So it's very important to understand that. Um, so, so basically, repentance and faith in Christ go hand in hand. Uh, they're not separate. And uh, as I said, it's, it's Jesus who um, initiates the change of heart. Because in and by ourselves, um, there's nothing we can do. Uh, John, uh, Jesus tells us in John fifteen five, uh, for apart from me you can do nothing. All right, so hope this helps a little bit. May God bless you and keep you. Uh, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.